You know, I have prayed for marriages and they fall apart. I have stood beside a hospital bed and prayed for little, a little small infant child to be healed by the Lord and that baby died. I prayed for God to open doors in my life and they stayed shut. I prayed for our country and its moral condition and it seems to get worse and worse. Does that mean that God is not answering my prayers? Does it mean that God has somehow become hard of hearing and needs some great cosmic hearing aids so that He can hear my heart and hear my prayers? No. We've all prayed to prayers, prayers in our life. There's no logical reason why God wouldn't answer them. I mean, everything looks good on the outside. Everything looks like it ought to line up. God, this is certainly has to be your will. And you told us that if we pray according to your will, you'll do it. It seems like everything's just going to, uh, should just fall in place. And then all of a sudden, we get a no from God or a maybe from God. So my sermon this morning is, is when my prayers seem unanswered. Sometimes in our lives, in our perspectives, and the way we, we uh, see the world, and the way uh, we go about it, and, and, and the way uh, things and pressures push down on us in this life, sometimes our prayers seem to be unanswered. But if you are following Christ Jesus, then God always answers your prayers. Amen? If you pray with your heart to the Lord, he will. Jeremiah 33, 3 reminds us, Call to me, the Lord is saying, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. We think we have a problem with God when we pray and God doesn't seem to answer us. No, God answers. But sometimes we just don't like His answers. Amen. <laughs> we don't like what He has to say. Sometimes... God tells us to go now. Sometimes it's a resounding yes. You have prayed according to His will. Uh, it, it serves His pleasure. It serves His purpose in this world. God says, you go with that and answers your prayers with a go. There are times when God answers yes immediately, and that's the kind of time we love that because we're on the same wavelength with the Lord, right? We wish that it worked that way every time. But you and I know it doesn't. Sometimes God doesn't say go. Sometimes God says, whoa, <laughs> hold on a minute. You're, you're in too big a rush, right? You're in too big a hurry to get there and to get things. Uh, and, and maybe I've got that planned in my timing and maybe I've got that planned in my way. But just, whoa, like, like riding an old horse, you know, and you got the reins and, and you don't want it to run off and leave you. Or you don't want it to go somewhere that it doesn't need to go yet. Maybe you haven't got the gate open yet and you're going to run into it and you go, whoa! You're not stopping there. You're just pausing for a little while. Waiting for the right time. God not only gives us, gives us always the right things in our life, He gives us the right things at the right time. Sometimes God says go. Sometimes God says, whoa. You know, football coaches understand this maybe better than some of us do. If you get a football coach, maybe at the college level or even at the high school level, and, and, and he's got a rookie quarterback that's running his offense, he's not going to open the whole playbook. He's not going to say, you go out there and you throw the ball around and you run the offense and I'll just be over here and watch and I hope you do all right. No, he's going to say, whoa, now. Just hand the ball off a few times, get the feel of the game, you know. Maybe, 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 maybe we'll throw a pass once in a while, but just it'll get you beat, right? There's a commercial on, on TV that was during the, the um, March Madness, the college basketball championships, where uh, it's got the founding fathers. They're all around the table, and it's kind of humorous because they're making modern comments. And then you've got uh, Matthew Henry, or, or not Matthew Henry, anyway, Thomas Jefferson, or one of those guys turn and say, a freshman point guard will kill you in the tournament, <laughs> you know. 
Sometimes it just needs a woe. A woe. And then sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says go. Sometimes God says woe. And sometimes God says no. It is not for your best, no matter how much you think it is, no matter how great uh, uh, an opportunity you think it is, God says no. And that's really when we get into our big problems sometimes we have where we get bowed up and we get swole up with the Lord, isn't it? Lord, why won't you let me have what I want? Like an impetuous child, forgetting that God knows what we need and God knows what is best for us. For us, And that's what I want to focus on this morning. I want to focus not when our prayers are unanswered, but when our prayers, God says no to them. God says, that's not what I want for you in your life. God doesn't play favorites on this, right? God's not partial on this. He has said no to some of the godliest people who had ever lived, right? I can remember Billy Graham telling a story about a great emphasis he wanted to do, a great crusade he wanted to do, where he believed that literally millions of people would come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior through the preaching ministry and the crusade ministry uh, that Billy Graham Evangelistic Association uh, did. And, And he prayed, and his team prayed, and God said, No! Billy said, I couldn't understand that. Dr. Graham did. I couldn't understand why God didn't want his word proclaimed. But he got to know. All the doors shut. And we've got to sometimes learn to live. Another godly man that we're going to look at this morning from God's word that got a big fat no from God was Moses. Now you know Moses. Moses was a great leader. Moses was called out by God at that burning bush where he had to take his shoes off. And God said, you will lead my people. You will will take them out of this Egyptian bondage. You will lead them uh, to the promised land, which lies on the other side of the Jordan. Well, Moses had made a mistake out of anger. He wasn't mad at God. He was mad at the people and their, and their mindset and mad at the people and their disobedience and their lack of trust in the Lord God. And, and so Moses had done something he shouldn't have done. And so God told him, Moses, you're not going to go into the promised land. Well, we find Moses praying in our passage in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 through 26. After God had said, you are not going to do it. I don't care how much you pray. uh, You're not going to do it. We find one last attempt that Moses made to try to get God to change his mind. Here in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 23 through 26. And we can learn some things about our prayer life. And we can learn some things about when God says no. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Begin reading with me in verse number 23. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time saying, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. I pray... Let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, enough of that. Speak no more to me of this matter. That's pretty final, isn't it? God told Moses, you're not going even on his last plea. If God said no to Moses, God said no to Paul, remember? Paul said over and over, three times I prayed that the Lord would remove this thorn in my flesh where I could do greater ministry, that I could be a better servant of His. And the Lord said, no, my grace is sufficient for all your needs. So the Lord said no to Moses. The Lord said no to Dr. Billy Graham. The Lord said no to Paul. Do you think that sometimes He may say no to us? There's a pretty good chance He is. He's going to say no to me. Sometimes. So that being said, we need to ask ourselves two very uh, important questions. We need to ask ourselves, why? And we need to ask ourselves, what? Why why did God say no to what I prayed for? And what is He teaching me about when He's told me no? Because there's two things I know for sure. Or one thing I know for sure. And it's uh, idealized and it's uh, illustrated in this passage. And the message truth is this. When God says no, it is always for my best and for His glory. 
I printed it out on your fill-in-the-blank outline so you could have it and look back. When God says no, it is always for my best and for His glory. I had a biology teacher years ago who, who said, um, if I write something on the chalkboard... You better know it's important. You better know you're going to see it on a test. She said, I'm allergic to chalk dust. So if it's important enough for me to write on the chalkboard, you better make sure you get it. Well, if I print it on that thing that you get on the outline on Sunday morning, it's important, and you better get it, all right? God, why God when God says no, it is always for my best and for His glory. So why does God say no? Why? Why would God ever tell us no? Why wouldn't God give us everything we want when we want it? First of all, God says no because God has a perspective that is clearer than ours. Amen? God's perspective is greater than our perspective. God sees things that we may never see. God knows things, of course, that we know or we, we may never know in our life. Can anyone guarantee what will happen in the next ten seconds? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was long enough for somebody to have a heart attack and leave this life and go over to either heaven or hell. Amen? That was long enough to have a car accident, spin out, hit a tree, and not make it. That was long enough for a lot of things to happen, for someone to take their last breath. Can anyone tell you with certainty what will happen to you in the next 10 seconds? Nobody in here can. <laughs> Nobody wearing Sunday clothes can. God can. If He wants to, God knows. God has a perspective that we do not have. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says this, And there is no creature hidden from His sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. God has a perspective that is clearer than ours. If we knew everything that God knows, oh wow. <laughs> Every time God says no, then we would say no, and we know that's not it. Sometimes I've said yes to things that God was saying no to, right? God was telling me, no way, don't want you to do it, and I disobeyed, and I did it anyway, and every single time, every single time I didn't hear that still small voice, every time I didn't feel the leading of the Holy Spirit in my life, do you know what happened? It was usually catastrophic, because God's perspective is clearer than mine. All prayers have a ripple effect that affect others, you know? When God says yes to us, it's going to affect you, it's going to affect you, it's going to affect you because we are a community He's put us in, right? Believers of Christ Jesus, I mean, it affects everybody. So when God says no, we may not understand why He says no. We may not see any downside to what we're praying for, but God can see clearer, He can see better. His perspective is clearer on every issue than on ours. Prayer is like a nuclear bomb. You say, really? Well, in order for a nuclear bomb to work, there has to be a chain reaction. That first one goes off, and it, and it hits that next atom, and all this happens in, in a nanosecond. But, but, but it just spreads out and causes this great, great destructive, and, and, and even in uh, a creation of power, a very creative force. But it takes a chain reaction. Here's an example. Paul wanted to go to Spain to preach in the Bible. He just felt like his heart was for Spain and he wanted to go and preach the gospel. A very worthy thing, right? It would be extremely worthy uh, of him to go to Spain and tell the good news and see people come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. God said, no, you're not going to Spain. Paul said, but Lord, I need to go to Spain. I got a heart for Spain. The Lord said, no. Instead, he sent him to Rome, and instead he went to prison. He said, Lord, how can we do this? How is this really a blessing? I could be in Spain preaching the gospel and seeing people say, but you've got me here in a Roman prison. How is this good, Lord? What he didn't have was this perspective to know that he would write more than half of the New Testament 
there in that Roman prison. He would write books like Philemon, like First and Second Corinthians, like Galatians and others. Almost half of the New Testament was written in that Roman prison. And now, down through 2,000 years, that Holy Spirit-inspired Word has led uh, literally millions and hundreds of millions of people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He, could have done, he did so much more from that Roman prison than he could have ever done spe- preaching in every little village in Spain. You see, God's got a perspective that's higher than our perspective. And God's ways are higher than our ways. There are two criteria for God's answer to to prayer. Number one, our good and His glory. Right? Our good and His glory. And one out of two just doesn't cut it. If it's just for our good but it doesn't bring glory to God, you're not going to get a yes. Yes. If it just brings glory to God, but it doesn't, it's not, if it brings glory to God, it's going to automatically be good for us. Our good and His glory. The first reason that God says no is, is that God has a perspective that is clearer than ours. Secondly, another reason God says no is because God's plan is better than ours. Amen? God's got a plan for our life that is so much better than ours. Isaiah chapter 55, 8 says these words, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. God's plan for your life is many times different from your plan and my plan for our life. You believe that? Maybe you experienced it in the person uh, that uh, is your spouse. Maybe you had got so close, it kind of reminds me of the old Garth Brooks song. Remember that? I thank God for unanswered prayers where he goes back to a homecoming high school football game and he sees the girl that every night he would pray that the Lord would make his wife. And, 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 and then he looks over at his wife and his family that came with him and he said, Lord, I thank you for unanswered prayers. And there's a, there's a little bit of humor in there, but there's a lot of truth in there too. God's plan is better than our plan. In the New Living Translation, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 39 and 40, you find these words. All of these people we have mentioned, talking about the great saints, the hall of faith, which was in the first part of Hebrews 11, received God's approval because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God has far better things in mind for us that would also benefit them, for they can't receive the prize at the end of the race until we finish the race. God has a plan for you that will fin- take you to the finish line of the race. God has a plan that will prosper you. God has a plan that will bring you hope and will give you a great tomorrow. And it's not always the same as our plans. And when that happens, if you're a follower of His, God will say no. No. So, God has a perspective that is clearer than ours. God has a plan that is better than ours. And then finally, God has a purpose that is higher than ours. Amen? God's purposes many times are higher than us, ours. I've heard it said that everything has a purpose. That's not exactly true. Everything has His purpose. There's a big difference. Just a purpose is just something wandering around aimlessly in the world. His purpose means that it's here to serve Him and to bring glory to Him uh, so, so greatly that it just stands up and shouts hallelujah to the name of the Lord. God's greatest priority in your life is your relationship with Him. It's not your health. I'm sorry to say. It's not your comfort. It's not necessarily your happiness. God's greatest priority in your life is your relationship to Him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God's greatest priority in your life is your relationship to Him. Now I want you all to draw up real close here for a minute. All right? I want to tell you something and we'll be done and you can get out and Beat the Methodist to lunch. How about that? <laughs> Come in real close. I'm going to tell you something right here in your life. It's easy to love God and praise God and worship God and serve God when God says yes. It's easy. 
But what are you going to do when you want something so bad you can taste it? Or you can touch it or you can smell it or you can feel it in your life? And God says, no. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to say, Lord, this is for my good and for your glory. I know that that's what it's for. Are you going to say that? Are you going to sit and are you going to pout? Are you going to sit under like Jonah did when God uh, answered his prayer in a very different way than he expected? Are you just going to sit there under even the shade that the Lord is providing? Or are you going to say, Lord... I want that reward that comes from diligently seeking you. Anybody, anybody can say, be happy with the Lord when he says yes. But what about when that child there in that neonatal ICU unit dies? Or what about when that marriage doesn't make it? Or when that job doesn't come through? What about then? Let me tell you why this matters. I think you know already. But this matters because I can tell you the prayer that 100% of the time God says yes to. That is when you ask Him to be the Savior of your life. You come to Him and you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I want to give my life to you. He says yes to that. 100% of the time. Tell you another one he'll say yes to. Lord, I want to follow you. I've given my life to you, but I've, I've kind of, I've been mad at you because you told me no. Lord, I want to give my whole life over to you and follow you. Will you embrace me? And of course, the father with the prodigal son coming home will put the robe on your back and kiss you on the neck. You say, my son, you're home. The Lord will say yes. You see, the reason he can say yes to those is because he said no to his son in that garden when he said, let, not this, no, let this cup pass from me. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He said no to his darling son so that he could say yes to you if you've never given your life to him. Trust the Lord with everything that you have and everything that you are. Trust Him in all your ways. Trust Him in where you're going. Trust Him in what you have. Trust Him in, in the, the health situations you may have in your life. Uh, pray for pray. It's great to pray. But when God says go, you go. When God says whoa, you slow down. And when God says no, say, Lord, I trust you. And when you do that, you'll be walking in Him. And in his ways. Would you stand quietly as we pray together?